Williams. You have heard us talking about Comic-Con that's on the way to the city this weekend. It's going to be at the Trade Center, and this guy is going to be one of the guest stars you'll see there. You've seen him on stage, screen, big screen. You've seen him on theater, and it is our honor to welcome Patrick Fabian to Chattanooga. Patrick, good to see you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. If it's a familiar face, it should be. He was the star, and in our opinion, the star of Better Call Saul. <laughs> you what? and my mom thought that, yes. <laughs> what, a, what a great piece of work. Work. We're going to talk more about that here okay. in a moment. Comic-Con, what, what drew you to, to Chattanooga for this? Well, for those of you who haven't been to Comic-Cons, they are so much fun. It's a great place where fans and, uh, and the people who have helped make the art get to mingle. And uh, it's a great place where you can go ahead and find your TV stars, your, your voiceover actors. Um, it's full of great energy. It's happening two days this weekend, starting at 10 o'clock at the uh, convention center right there on Carter Street across from the Marriott, and then Sunday at 11. I'll be there all day. You're welcome to come in and tell me how, how great you thought I was in something, or <laughs> if you'd like to tell me how terrible I was in something, I can hear that as well. You have been in such a wide variety of projects, and I know you've done a lot of voice acting. How does that differ from when you're doing your conventional on camera? Well, with the voice acting, you, you get to wear your sweatpants, basically, if you want. That's really the biggest plus. Uh, right. Although, it, you still have to really infuse all the things that you do when you're on screen. Uh, it's not like you get lazy all of a sudden. In some respects, you have to actually be more focused because you can't rely on your face uh, in order to convey what you're trying to do. What has been your favorite voiceover character, your favorite animation piece of work that you've done? Um, I got to play uh, Cyborg Superman in The Death of Superman, which is DC animation thing right. that you can get. And, uh, you know, when I was in the booth, um, I'm, I'm getting torn apart and I'm doing all that. So they call it efforting and I'm going, <laughs> and I thought I was doing a really good job and I stopped and I looked through the booth and I could see the booth director and they all were like, hmm, and I realized I wasn't hitting the mark. And then they went ahead and redirected me, thank God, because, you know, as yeah. an actor, I always need a director. And, uh, and we got something that was really cool. And when I got to go see the finished product sitting in the theater, watching the fans react to it and having the animation all there, it, you know, it's, that, it's magic for me. It's still magic. All right, we're going to talk more about Comic-Con here in a moment. Going to dive into a little bit of history. Back when you were on Better Call Saul, mm -hmm. your character met... Um, shall we say, a rather uncomfortable death. Yes. Uh, that's a fair way to put it. And if you wonder who the character was, of course, it was Howard Hamlin, the attorney. Um, what was it like when you were sitting at home after the show or as the show was airing and you're dead and they're doing a memorial service for you? Um, that was really weird. That was, I, I wasn't expecting how much that was going to hit me because, one, I'd been on the show for six years. They were all my friends and my colleagues. And all of a sudden, after you know, six years, it's over. You're no longer invited to the party. And of course, your funeral is the one party that you're not invited to. <laughs> and, <laughs> and not only that, everybody on the show who I'd worked with was at my memorial. And I wanted to be there. Yeah. Not only that, they used photos from my actual life um, for the memorial for Howard, the right. character of Howard. So a bit of me was like, oh, this is what it's going to look like. <laughs> As an actor, and you have played good guys, bad guys, heroes, villains. As an actor, is it more fun to play the good guy and the hero or the bad guy? Well, I, thank you for saying I played the hero, but, uh, but I haven't. I've really played the bad guy. You played quite the a lot. good guy, though. Well, you played I, the good guy in a lot of. Th I played the good guy in the first act, and then by the, the the third act, you find out like I'm you know I'm running drugs or something from my company. <laughs> you know, my mother used to call me up at the beginning and say like, "Why are you always playing such bad people?" <laughs> I take that real quick. My favorite role, though, was on, on Xena, the warrior princess. Right. For those of you who are old enough to remember. Uh, and the reason is, is that uh, they flew me to New Zealand. I got to be the good guy. I got to beat up the bad guys. And I got to kiss the girl. And they paid me, as my father said. He said, <laughs> they pay you for that? And I'm like, yes, that's why I'm an actor. Um, Going to throw a few names at you. Yes. Just your quick initial response on what it's like to work with a TV genius like... Vince Gilligan. Oh, amazing. I felt so comfortable. Anything he suggested was always the right suggestion, I gotta tell you. Bob Odenkirk. Best number one on the call sheet I've ever worked with in my life. Why? Uh, because he cared. Um, he cared about the work when we were there. And we had fun, but he was all about, like, we have such limited time to get this thing together, and this is such a, an opportunity to do something good. Let's do something good. Michael McKeon. Smartest guy I know. 
Without a doubt. Working against him, I always felt like, uh, well, the scene's going to be good because Michael McKean's in it, you know? Yeah. Um, and, of course, you can't argue with his uh, showbiz pedigree. He goes back. He was the original Letty on uh, Laverne and Shirley. Absolutely. He's so, so smart. I think Spinal Tap 2 is going to be coming out soon, by the way. Yeah which I'm really thrilled about. That'd when I first met him, I said, oh, I saw Spinal Tap in the theater when it came out. And he said, oh, you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a character or a role that's on your bucket list to play? Oh, I've always wanted to play, like, the sheriff. You know, like High Noon. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be, like, the guy who rides in as the gun and the hat and all that. But unfortunately, my career has been, if I was in a Western, most likely I'd be the lawyer from back east who's been sent out to tell them that they've bought the town. <laughs> Yet... Your role of a lifetime, husband and dad. Absolutely. Been married uh, 15 years. I got two little girls. And, um, it is, it, you know, it's a cliche, but, it's, but, but it's, it is the truth. You know, I, I got married, found the right lady, and ended up having uh, children. And uh, everything else sort of paled in comparison. And not surprisingly, I got a little more relaxed about myself, and I started working better, so. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Since you're here um, in town, we're going to do something we only do for very special guests. Ooh. We're going to play the speed round. I know it's a speed round because it says it right here in the envelope. Are you ready for the speed round? I guess so. All right, you ready? Don't think a whole lot, just give me the answer. You ready? Uh, bacon or sausage? Oh, sausage. Book or the movie? Book. Beach or the mountains? Oh, beach. Crunchy or creamy? Crunchy. Cats or dogs? <laughs> dogs. And for the women in the audience, boxers or briefs? Boxers. <laughs> What a great guy. He is going to be at Comic-Con. You'll be able to come up, and I can tell you he is as nice in person as he tries to appear villainous on screen. All right, Patrick, tell us a little bit about the particulars of what you're going to be doing at Comic-Con. Right, well, I'm going to be sitting there and saying everything that you want me to say and signing anything you want. So will everybody else there. Again, it's this Saturday and Sunday. Um, you can check us out on social media at Chat Comic Con. And also, I think later on, you guys are going to be giving away two tickets if you stick around to the end of the show. Yeah, but you're going to help us do that coming up here in just a moment. As we go to the commercial break, let me come back and ask you one more question. What's the most unusual thing a fan has ever asked you to autograph? Uh, a part of her body. A part of her body. Yes. We'll find out which part of the body that is coming up. No, we won't. Stick around. <laughs> News 12 this morning. That will continue right after this.